Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining today's webinar. Today, we're going to talk about the Masters in Management at Odensia Business School and also about the selection process at Joiner School in France. Just to present myself, my name is Lauria Muller. I'm the International Project Manager for Asia at Joiner School in France. And today, I'm really happy to be with Benjamin Refmo, who is the International Relations Manager at Odensia Business School. So hi, Benjamin, and thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Thanks a lot. So um, just before handing it over to you, Benjamin, I just wanted to highlight that there's a chat box on the right hand side. So feel free to ask uh, your questions in the chat box and we'll have uh, 10 to 15 minutes at the end to answer all your questions. So Benjamin, the floor is yours. All right, great. So um, today I really kind of want to talk a little bit about uh, the not only the program, the Master of Management at Odensia, but also to kind of talk a little bit about our school and maybe the location that we're in today as well. So I'm really going to kind of start off by talking about the school. And so you can see some key information about us here on the first slide. Some things that you may want to note is that we've been around for more than 120 years. We were created in 1900. Uh, you know, we're definitely known for different things like rankings and accreditations. Uh, typically, we're ranked amongst the top 100 schools in the world. Uh, normally between 60 and 80, uh, top 20 to 40 in Europe, and then number six in France. Um, we're also very well known for our triple accreditation. You know, we have ACSB, Equus, and AMBA, which are the three sort of gold standards for uh, international business and education, but we also do have a variety of other accreditations for um, different certifications and different recognitions all around the world. So you can uh, rest assured that uh, your program will be recognized pretty much anywhere in the world that you may be using it. A little bit about where we are. We're in the city of Nantes. Uh, it's pronounced without the S at the end. Um, and we're the sixth largest city in France. Uh, we're very well known as a student city. Uh, many times we're referred to as a sort of Cambridge of France, where we're close enough to the capital. Um, you know, we're only two hours away from Paris by train. But, you know, here we're very well known for our higher education institutions. We have many different engineering schools and business schools and universities and different faculties. So you're going to see a lot of different services and, and products that are very much oriented towards uh, students, especially international students. So I think it's a great uh, sort of compromise between the two. It's a large enough city where there's always something to do. There's usually these uh, events and services that are very much uh, student focused and international student focused. Um, but you know, it's not a small village and you're not very far away from uh, the capital. You're also not very far away from the coast. So if you enjoy different ocean activities, uh, you're only 50 kilometers away from that. Uh, here are a few photos of Nantes as well. Uh, the area that we're in is where you'll see a lot of different castles in history as well. Um, this is known as a sort of Valley of Kings where, you know, um, many different castles and, and, and abodes were built in the area. So it makes it for very nice sort of weekend tourism to be able to go around and see some of these historic monuments and, and um, sites that are really you know, not very far away and can be done very easily from where you're at here in Nantes. Once again, like I was talking about with the accreditations, here are the three big uh, international accreditations that really show that your uh, business degree is recognized throughout the world. Equus is the Continental European um, accreditation. AACSB is an American system, and AMBA is from um, the UK, which accredits different uh, MBA degrees. And amongst all of the different business schools in the world, fewer than 1% of all business schools worldwide have these uh, triple crown, this triple accreditation. So. Like I said, there are other accreditations um, for our different programs. We have some um, that are government uh, recognitions. We have other ones that are uh, sort of based on different standards that we have. And we'll talk a little bit about that, especially when we're talking about corporate social responsibility and the sort of initiatives that we have here. And like I said, we are recognized in the rankings as well. You're going to see some of the international rankings here on the left, as well as some of the national rankings here on the right. Uh, you're going to see some big names here, which are uh, once again, sort of standards worldwide, like the Financial Times, Economist, CNN. Um, so once again, if the uh, place where you're going to work doesn't recognize that put maybe the name of the school or maybe some of the accreditations, the way that they're going to be assured of the quality is through, you know, looking up some of these uh, accreditations that we have that assure the level of quality and the education that we give to all of our students. So what I was talking about too was our sort of commitment to CSR. And here are a couple of other sort of recognitions that we have 
from a variety of different organizations that shows the work that we do in order to make sure that the students that we are training on our programs uh, are prepared for the types of managerial jobs of tomorrow. And what I mean by that is that, of course, you know, on our programs, we talk about the sort of economic responsibility that a manager has, but a manager also has sort of a responsibility to the community and the people around them, the environment around them as well. And some of the work that we've done on that is really related to the United Nations. So you're going to see here going all the way back to 2004, uh, you know, we were a founding institution in what's known as the Global Compact. So the Global Compact is a UN initiative that really kind of focuses on environmental and uh, social responsibility in business. And we really helped to found some of the principles, especially in management education, which in 2007 led to this uh, principles of responsible management education, which once again, is an initiative done through the United Nations in order to be able to help foster this sort of uh, ideal in the managers of tomorrow. I think you know all of us recognize now that businesses are part of the community that they're that, uh, that they're in, and you know we really have to pay attention to the effects that we have on the communities and the environments around us, especially in certain industries that rely on on these types of uh, uh, you know environmental impact that they make. On, on the world around them. And it really is at the core of our values. And it's one of the ways that we talk about business and management and, and doing it in a responsible way. Um, continuing through with our work with the World Wildlife Fund, um, all the way through uh, to some of the initiatives that we're working on today. Um, here, I want to kind of give an overview of the school itself. So um, we mostly have graduate level studies, so master's level studies. So when you're taking a look at the number of students, you may think uh, 6,000, that's not really a lot, but for a business school that mainly focuses on master's degrees, um, you know, it is quite a large student body with a variety of different specializations that we're gonna take a look at later. And 30% of our student body comes from you know, more than hundred countries around the world. We're very well known for our diversity, not only in the student body, but also at the teaching staff. More than 50% of our professors come from outside of France. And I think it really makes for a unique environment where, um, you know, for many international students, the draw of coming to our school is that you're really kind of getting this international experience inside and outside the classroom. For many students, you know, coming to France is going to be something that's new. They're coming to study entirely in English and then outside the classroom, they have the ability to be able to go and learn a new language and be able to make these new connections. But also inside the classroom, when we're working with people from a variety of different backgrounds and nationalities, the whole idea is that we want students to be prepared for this type of international environment. And, um, you know, when we're talking about real world working environments, pretty much every business is international in some way or another. So what we're really doing is kind of practicing that in the classroom so it becomes very concrete for somebody who's going to be a manager after graduation. That way, you don't need additional training in order to be able to feel comfortable working in those types of international environments. Not only does it state that clearly on your CV through the types of programs that you're doing through our school and, and, and the types of rankings and accreditations that we have, but also just in the training that you're doing inside the classroom and the practice that you're doing by working with other people who might have different approaches and different ideas about how to approach a subject and really, that's part of the job of an international manager is really being able to kind of you know balance a group out and put people into positions where they're going to be able to add something to the group as a whole it can sometimes be a sort of challenge but i think you know that diversity in the classroom is a real strength for us and it's it's one of the uh, points that we're very well known for especially teaching and learning in the classroom um, and once again you're going to see this in the, in the rankings on the left hand side the economist ranks us in the top 10 in the world um, for diversity as well as, as QS. So, uh, you know, this is something that we find to be very important in preparing students for those jobs of tomorrow. Uh, as well as a global network. Um, you know, our alumni network is throughout the world. We have different embassies um, in different countries around the world. We prepare people for international careers. And I think uh, our alumni organization kind of shows that very well. Um, we have 30,000, graduates that are in over 200 chapters on all five continents. So, you know, no matter where you really find yourself in your career after graduation, you're going to be able to find a group of Odensea students somewhere near you. And I think that that really kind of helps a lot when you're setting, settling into a new environment. You know, having somebody there that has that shared background 
um, is a great way to be able to start building a network. And that's one of the challenges sometimes when you're going into a new environment is, you know, where is that network? So you can always kind of rely on that alumni organization. And I think as well, um, you know, our career services department prepares students for these types of international careers by not only putting people in contact with our alumni services, um, but also just through the career counseling that they do during the program. And, and maybe I'll talk a little bit about that um, as well, because I think um, this preparation for what happens after graduation, this is the real focus that we have at Odensea. Um, you know, the, the two or three years that you spend with us in your studies, uh, we hope that you're going to have a great time and I'm sure that you're going to learn a lot, but really, the important focus should be on what happens after graduation, that next five, 10, 15 years. And that's what we really prepare our students for is what will happen in that next phase of their career. And I think um, establishing that global network is a great way to be able to get students prepared for that next phase. And speaking of career services, you know, we do have these career counselors that work with all of our students as a mandatory part of the program. So some students think that maybe, uh, you know, it's just the marketing and accounting classes and human resource classes that kind of comprise the entire program, but that's not it. Um, you know, you do have these mandatory meetings that you're going to have with career service counselors. And a lot of times these career service counselors used to work as headhunters. So they really kind of understand the entire hiring process and they counsel students not only on helping them to decide what type of career path to take, what type of industries, what types of positions, what types of businesses might want to work with you, but they also give some really good advice about different specializations. Um, they can even give important information about uh, the position that you're applying for. Is it a new position? Is it a replacement position? Is there certain uh, qualifications or certifications that you need to have in order to be successful at getting the job? I mean. I think this is why you see that statistic on the left hand side where it says 92 percent of our students are placed within two months of graduation because it's a real focus of the program of you know uh, helping students to learn how to create a career path for themselves and i think like i said that's a skill set that's just as important as any sort of marketing class that you're going to have because most students are going to change jobs at some point in their career so teaching them about how to do that successfully during the program I think is a, a really important skill set that um, all of our students kind of benefit from. Now, if you remember back to an earlier slide, we have about 6,000 students at Redencia, but every year we get over 90,000 job offers and internships. Um, you know, there's just a lot of different companies that want to hire our students in a variety of different ways. And our career services department really helps students to be able to um, pick out the options that are best for them, whether it's based on their language or location or specialization or the types of companies. I think that they do a lot of uh, help in getting students um, prepared for that next steps in, in those next steps in their career. And they do that in a variety of different ways. And you'll see here on the right, you know, there are different tools to help you define your career plans. They even do things like psychometric testing. If you're really kind of wondering what types of businesses match best with your uh, interests and your strengths, they do a lot of great work in that area. Of course, uh, internship and job search techniques. All of our programs at some point during the program have at least one mandatory internship. Uh, our master in management probably has the most amount of different periods where you can do internships. So I think, uh, you know, preparing people for that job search and the different inter uh, different techniques is, is really important. Also, an interesting statistic is that usually around two thirds of our students get a job offer through their internship. So this internship is a really vital part of, you know, kind of um, creating this next step in your career path. So we definitely put a lot of attention to it and a lot of resources to it. And I think it's one of the great advantages of the program. Um, and they also do uh, a variety of different things that are maybe a little bit more business focused, where if a business is looking for a particular profile, they set up CV books and, and organize interviews with those companies in order to be able to help uh, find that best fit between the companies and the variety of the different students that we have. And of course, we also have a dedicated digital platform where you can search for these different opportunities based on a variety of different criteria. Here are a couple of logos. I mean, we have more than 200 business partners that we work with in a lot of different capacities, um, but you know, here are some of the ones that, that you'll see that uh, hire on campus. Now, if I'm talking particularly about the master and management program, the uh, program that we offer through this consortium, Join a School in France, um, there are really kind of two formats. So you're going to see that I'm going to break this down into two parts. One, I'm going to talk about the traditional format. This is for everybody, no matter what background you're coming from. 
um, you know, as long as you have that bachelor's degree, or if you're in that last year of your bachelor's degree, you're going to be able to apply for this program. You're going to see later that we do have a sort of accelerated format of this same program that focuses on management for engineers. And this is only for engineers that are going into the program. It's a slightly accelerated program um, and uh, gets people out into the job market faster. So first, I'm going to talk about this more traditional track. Um, you know, you can see here more about the rankings. And I think one of the hallmarks of this program in particular is the wide variety of different majors that you can choose. I'll go on to those in a minute. We split them up into three major categories, but there's a wide variety of different topics that you can choose from that really allow you to prepare for a wide uh, spectrum of different careers. And the nice thing about it is that, you know, you don't have to choose, choose just one area. You have two different specialization phases where you can choose to combine maybe two different areas that uh, um, you normally wouldn't get in a very specialized uh, master's degree. You know, instead of just focusing on marketing, maybe you could take a little bit of marketing and some, and some finance and combine those two specializations together so that you can work with financial products. I mean, it's something that we think is really kind of responding to um, the job market of today, where you're not just looking at somebody who has one area of specialization and one area only, but rather has, you know, a combination of different areas um, that respond really to the needs of that company or that position. Of course, if you do want to do two different um, specialization in the finance field, you can do that and go deeper and be more prepared for those types of fields. Um, but the choice of yours, I think it's really about the flexibility and um, you know being able to customize this program to your needs. You'll see uh, that you can choose courses either in, in French or in English. We have English tracks or French tracks. Um, people will choose the track originally through their application. So you know if you submit different things like an English test or a GMAT test, you're going to be put more into the English track. Whereas if you put more of a Taj Mahal test, um, you're going to be into um, a French track. But you can always switch between them. It's just that you have to be able to show your linguistic ability during the program in order to be able to switch into different tracks. So it's not just limited. If you're if you start in the French track, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily have to end in the French track, or vice versa with English. But uh, you know, you're able to switch between them as long as you're able to show that linguistic ability. So once again, I was saying that this is the uh, program that offers the most amount of internship experience. So you have to do at least four months of internship experience at the end of the program. But if you want, you can choose a gap year, which is why we say that this is a two or three year program. If you want to do the program and you know only that mandatory internship at the end of it, um, you can do this entire program within two years, or you can choose uh, to do a gap year after the first semester and you know go into different companies, test out different areas. And I find that to be really useful for people, especially who are coming from non-business backgrounds or don't really have a clear idea of what type of career path they want to take or might hesitate between a couple of different areas. I find it to be really helpful to do some internships, work in those areas and really kind of see which one feels most comfortable to you. And, and I think that'll really give people a good idea of, of how they would like to go forward in their career. I think the worst thing that can happen is somebody gets to the end of a program, they've chosen a specialization, they've never been able to work in it before. And then the first internship or the first employment experience they have after it, they go, oh, you know, this is really not what I was expecting before. So being able to use the time during the program to test things out, I think is um, a really strong point. We do have some optional double degree tracks in France and abroad. Um, you have different optional semesters that you can choose in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, or the USA. Um, and you can find those different partners on our website. Some of the exchange options do include additional tuition fees, um, just because especially in the United States, the difference in tuition fees can be quite large. So make that clear. Um, here are two of the main areas, and I'm just going to switch real quick into the other slide where it shows the third area of specialization, but here's where we go through and we talk about all the different areas that you can choose to specialize in. Um, so they can be done, some in English, some in French, some only in one language. Um, but like I was saying, if you're wanting to focus on finance and only finance, you can choose different areas within um, this umbrella of specializations as you wish. If you'd like to combine um, a couple of those areas, you can, and then just focus only on those financial uh, questions, or you can combine it with another area like uh, some of these areas in marketing or uh, our last area, which is focusing on management. Management you know, can mean a variety of different things ranging from consulting to supply chain management, entrepreneurship, arts management, 
uh, a wide variety of different topics when I think you combine them in that sort of hybrid learning way can be quite strong when you are considering certain positions that have very specific industries that they're dealing with or very specific needs. Uh, I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, you know, some of the key points like the degree earned. So uh, there is a difference between like Master of Sciences and M2 degrees. This of course is an M2 degree, which is given by the French Ministry of Higher Education. Once again, the language of instruction is your choice. It's just going to be something that you're going to indicate uh, uh, to us based on the types of documents that you submit during the application process. Uh, we have two intakes, one in the fall, one in the spring. And once again, this duration, it depends. It's a choice of yours. The traditional format of the program is two years long, but if you decide to do that gap year, it can be a three-year program if you'd like. The tuition fee is total. This is not something that uh, is per year. This is for uh, the total cost of the program. And um, you know, here's some information about uh, eligibility. Um, in terms of the bachelor's degrees, you, you are required to have a degree from a non-French institution. You have to be uh, a graduate from a non-French uh, institution in order to be eligible for international admissions, and that's the type of admissions that we're applying here in the Join a School in France process. I had talked a little bit about uh, this Management for Engineers program. Now, this is specifically for people who are coming from an engineering background and who want to do a little bit more of a condensed, accelerated version of uh, the Grand Ecole program. So the, the degree is the same. It's the exact same program. You've got all the same services and professors and subjects, uh, except that this one is only for engineers. And the reason why we did that is we found that engineers in particular have a very interesting choice in their career path, which is, you know, after doing a bachelor's degree in engineering, they typically work for a little bit, maybe one to three years, and then there's a choice that needs to be made. Either they go back for a master's degree to go deeper into a technical area like materials or processes or something of that nature, or they can combine it with a master's degree in order to be able to make this really powerful combination, which is probably the most requested profile from all of our uh, business partners. And since uh, engineers tend to do a longer program, whether it's a four or five year program, we've sort of condensed it down into this accelerated format so that students will be able to get back into that job market faster. Um, it's got some great rankings, uh, you know, including the one here from the Financial Times. Um, and there's a really strong link with career services. Once again, since this is probably the most requested profile from all of our business partners, um, you know, career services has a lot of options for people to graduate from uh, this track in particular. I think, you know, this, this combination can be found in a lot of different positions where you wouldn't even think of. A lot of people think, oh, I'm an engineer. If I go for a master's and management degree, I'm going to end up working in R&D or, you know, something that's very technical in nature. But a lot of times, I think people just really like the fact that an engineer has good problem solving skills, good quantitative skills. Uh, they can really kind of break things down into component pieces in order to be able to solve a problem. And then when you match that with knowledge about business, it makes for a really powerful combination that's really highly in demand for a lot of um, different positions you never would really kind of think of. This format also has a, a fall and spring intake. And it doesn't have the same sort of study abroad options, but there are some summer terms that you can do in Nantes or abroad. Um, since it is more of an accelerated format, it doesn't have the same range of different international partners as the traditional track does. Um, that's kind of the trade-off is being able to do it quicker and get back into the job market faster versus having more double degree options and different international partnerships. Now, a question that I get quite a bit is about scholarships. Um, we have an entire funding page that's dedicated to this, so I'm going to kind of go over some of the options that we have, but you're going to see that we have a few major different types of uh, ways that you can affect the tuition fee. So it's not really a scholarship, but it, depending on when you apply, there can be an early application reduction. So that's something to keep in mind. And, and you know, I, I in some ways going to be speaking specifically about Odensi, but I think that this is a general a uh, piece of advice for anybody who's applying for any school, um, you know, whether it's the other schools in the consortium or really any school in the world, is that the earlier that you apply, the larger the scholarship budget is. And then as time goes on, that scholarship budget kind of gets smaller and smaller. So, you know, if you are looking for scholarships, the best advice that I can give you is always to apply early, as that's when 
the budget is going to be there. We have a few different types of scholarships in addition to that. Some of them are based on things that you, know, you won't have any sort of control over, things like uh, our women en engineering scholarship. This is in order to be able to support diversity in the classroom, and we want to be able to support um women who are coming from an engineering background so you know it's just the degree that they have there's no additional application process that you need you just have to indicate it on your application and then um you'll be able to benefit from that uh that scholarship in particular some of them are project-based you're not going to find that here for the master of management but that is a, a particular type um, and then other ones are more like merit-based scholarship based on your GPA or any sort of test scores that you've submitted with your application. So those kind of the, the general types of uh, scholarships that we have at ODNC. And of course, we're here. There's plenty of ways that you can get in contact with us. If you have any other sort of questions, please feel free to email us at international at odensia.com or join us on a variety of our different pages. I think one of the great ways to be able to learn about schools is to interact with current students. I mean, of course, we're here. You can always reach us at our institutional email address, but I always like when you're able to be, use social media in order to be able to get in contact with current students and to see it from their perspective, especially for students who might be uh, coming to France for the first time. It's a great way to get pieces of advice, get knowledge about what teaching and learning is like really in the classroom. Um, so I, I think that there's a wealth of information that you can get from our current students. Uh, but like I said, of course, we're here and feel free to contact us. So that's really all that I have about our programs today. Please feel free to get in contact with us and I'll be looking forward to any questions that you might have. Lovely. Thank you so much, Benjamin. So if you have any actually any questions for Benjamin uh, right now, you can ask them in the chat. So feel free. We're here to answer questions. Um, so I'm actually going to talk about uh, Joiner School in France. So Joiner School in France is uh, a department of the Paris Ile-de-France Chamber of Commerce, and it was created with the business schools uh, to simplify international students' applications. So what it basically means is that with one application, you apply to five business schools at once, including Audencia, but also Schema, EM Lyon, HEC Paris and ESCP. And it's really important to highlight that with Joiner School in France, you can op only apply to the Masters in Management. What type of profiles are we looking for? Like Benjamin already said, we're looking for students who hold a degree in higher education outside of France, regardless of a field of study. So it can be a bachelor, a license, or a banker for Chinese students, or you must be currently studying the last year of your degree. So the, really the most important thing to know is that you have to have at least three years of academic studies. So you're probably wondering how to apply. It's pretty simple. You go on our website, joinersquintfrance.com and you fill out the online application form, which you can see on the screen with your personal information. So that's pretty straightforward. Moving on to the next step. So here is all the documents that you have to upload on your online application. Uh, so you need to upload an identity document, a passport or a national ID card, your diploma or certificate of attendance if you haven't graduated yet, the complete transcript of your records, you really need to see your three or four academic years. Um, moving on to a pretty important document, which is a management test score. So we accept the GMAT, the GRE, the TAJMAJ, for, which is in French, and the CAT for Indian students. And for the management test, and also actually for the English, English test, sorry, we strongly advise you to take the test at least uh, once, one month in advance, because it does take some time to receive the results. Um, you also need to upload two letters of recommendation, which can either be academic or professional. And it's really important that we see uh, your reference uh, contact details, whether it's a, a phone or an email address, because some schools may want to reach out to them to, if they have any questions about you. So moving on to the CV, which is pretty straightforward. So if you want to highlight anything in your CV, it's really uh, in this area that you can put it. And last but not least, the joining school in France application fee, which is of 200 euros. So you need to upload the invoice uh, in your application. So once you've filled out your online application, uploaded all your documents, you need to answer five essay questions, which you can see on the screen. I have to say that they're a bit small, so I'm probably going to read them out. It will be easier. Um, 
So the first one is describe your proudest accomplishments. The second one is describe a situation where you face failure and what lessons did you learn from it. The third one is how does your application benefit the five member schools? The fourth one is did you take part in any extracurricular activities in the past years? And the last one is how will you finance your studies? So it's really important to highlight that there's a, a maximum of, of 500 characters per question. So you really need to be precise and concise in your answers. And we usually get the answer of a question, sorry, of the uh, cover letter, and there is no cover letter. All you need to do is answer these five essay questions. The next step in the process is the interview. Um, so applicants who are eligible to at least one school will be invited to an interview. And uh, the Join a School in France team will send you an email with the links to the school's websites where they will be posting the admissibility results. Um, if you're eligible for an interview, uh, the interview will be done in one of our exam centres. So we have partnerships with French institutions around the world, like Campus France, the Alliance Française, the Chambers of Commerce and the French embassies. So in your online application, you get to choose the city of your choice uh, for the interview. And whether you've been accepted for an interview by one school, three schools, or the five schools, you will have only one single interview. Um, the interview is between 20 to 30 minutes and is conducted in English. And the jury uh, is composed of two to three alumni. And uh, most of the time, uh, we try to do the interviews face to face. But given the exceptional circumstances that we're facing with COVID, we may do them online. And finally, the jury members will ask you questions about your personality, your motivation, your professional projects, and your general knowledge. They won't ask you any questions about your academic background because this will be evaluated by the schools uh, with your grades. So here is a summary of just of what I've just said. Uh, so you apply on joinerschoolinfrance.com, you fill out your online application, you upload all the required documents, then the business schools will decide whether you're eligible for an interview or not. If you are, you will be invited to the interview center that you chose in your online application. And the interview will be either face-to-face -face or online if it's not possible. And of course, the most important step, you will receive admission results. On the screen, you can see uh, the admission calendar for this year. So we have four rounds per year and we're already in round four. Uh, so the last round uh, to apply, for, sorry, the, the date for the last round to apply is uh, May 2nd. You will get your eligibility results for the interview by end of May. The interview period will be between the May 27th and June 7th, and you will get your admission results by the end of June. And if you want to apply for the intake in 2023, we do not have the exact dates yet, but it will be around the same period. So for the first round for 2023 will be uh, around uh, beginning of October of this year. Here's just a few information. If you want to check our website, joinerscreenfrance.com, you can find useful inf information about the rules, about our webinar calendar, and also links to our social media. And for instance, uh, this webinar is being recorded, so you can find it out on our YouTube channel. And here's just the links to all our social media. So we're available on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, WeChat and Weibo for Chinese and uh, YouTube. And this is just our pre presentation of the team. Uh, you can reach out on uh, WhatsApp also. You have a WhatsApp number on the bottom uh, right side and our email address, uh, joinersqueenfrance at cci-paris-idf.fr if you want to reach out uh, after this webinar. So that's it uh, for my part. Um, I was hoping that we'll get a few questions, but unfortunately, uh, no one has asked anything. So if you if you have any, feel free. Um, I don't know if Benjamin, maybe you have something you would like to highlight. Sure, sure. I mean, I can talk about some of the most frequently asked questions that we get a lot of times from students. Um, you know, in case that might spark some ideas on anybody 
who's attending today, but a lot of times people also want to know, you know, what can I expect after I go through the process? So we've gone through all the different points here about the different dates when you need to submit the different documents, the um, you know, interviews that you'll do. Um, but then a lot of people know what's going to happen if I'm accepting the program. So what you're going to see is that there are different publication dates when all the schools sort of announce um, the results. You'll be able to go on to the different schools' websites and, and uh, see what the results are for each one of them. Um, and then at least from our side, and I think that it, it's generally the same with the other school, but I could talk particularly about what happens with us is that generally students will have two weeks to register on a program. Now, registration includes uh, sending back an enrollment document that you'll be able to download off of our site, as well as paying the first round of tuition fees, which is 1,500 euros. And that's not in addition to the tuition fees that were listed. It's just the first payment that sort of confirms that you'll be coming with us. And then what will happen is that we will be in contact with you for a variety of different things. If there is a uh, scholarship that needs to be attributed or you have a certain profile or, or certain level of excellence, then um, you know that can be added um, as well. And we're going to be in contact with you about things that you're going to need in terms of logistics and coming to France, getting you the documents that you'll need in order to be able to apply for your visa. Um, we have an online housing platform where students are going to be able to go on and search for the different housing options that we have throughout the city. Um, and then there's always somebody who's going to be there to sort of accompany you at each step of the way to start looking forward toward uh, the orientation period that people will have. Um, in order to be able to start the program, sort of getting them ready for all of those first steps. So that's typically what happens. And like I said, you always have somebody who's there to coordinate with you and sort of accompany you at each step of the way. Um, but I think it's kind of important to know um, what, what we're looking for. Um, so I have one question that's about our data management program. So we do have a specialization um, that's in the master in management, but we also do have a separate data management program, which is not part of this consortium that we're in. So if we're talking about the master in management program, you may want to look into different specializations that allow you uh, to focus on data management, especially in finance or whatever particular area that you're looking at, or whether you're looking at big data management, maybe in, in marketing. Um, but uh, the management test isn't, isn't required for any sort of specialization. It's more, um, you know, what we're looking for during um, the admissions process. Now, we haven't really put a large emphasis on the management test, especially these, these last few years for a variety of different reasons, whether it's access to testing centers or just the fact that, uh, you know, tests like the GMAT and GRE aren't necessarily a great predictor of success on international programs. So we, we put a little less emphasis on, on those types of management tests. And like I said, it's definitely not one of those selecting factors in order to be able to get into one of these specializations. I think the main criteria that we use in order to be able to see whether the student is going to be able to participate on some of these more quantitatively heavy subjects like uh, data management, particularly data management and finance, are things like uh, computer science skills, particularly with the language Python, um, being able to make sure that students are um, have the sort of necessary skills in order to be able to keep up with the classes as data management is sort of this fusion between, let's say, computer sciences and different business topics. So if you do have a question about that in particular, you know, we definitely can set up a call with you. Once again, just reach us at internationaladodensia.com and we can definitely um, meet with you and, and talk uh, you know, more specifically about those. Let's see. We also... Benjamin, I was actually uh, replying in the chat, but I'll say it out loud um, because someone asked if the essay questions can be in French. The answer is yes, but honestly, I highly suggest you do them in English. It would be preferable because if you are eligible uh, for an interview and the alumni are English speakers, they won't be able to read your, your answers. So if you can uh, do them in English, please. And I, I think also for the schools, you know, even when we do have a French track, um, there are going to be a lot of elements that are still in English. We're going to have case studies that are in English. We're going to have different articles that are written in English. So even when you're going for the French track, being able to show that you have those abilities in English is really a great way to be able to, once again, kind of 
show your uh, skill sets and what you're going to be able to do in the classroom. So, you know, there is no um, rule against it, but I just think that if you feel really comfortable with your English skills, it'll just give you know, one more point um, that could be in your advantage when you're when you're applying. Oh, um, so there's a, a particular question about Odensi and how to join us in particular. So if we're talking about three join a school in France, it's going to work the same way as it does with any of the schools that are participating in it. And what you're going to be able to do is on the date of publication, um, there's going to be a variety of different links where you can go on to each one of the sites. You'll put in your, S, uh, your join a school in France number and you'll be able to see what the results are. On our page, what it looks like is that you put in um, your joint school in France number, as well as your, your birth date, and then it will automatically show you whether you've been accepted into the program or not. If you've been accepted into the program, you're going to be able to download the contract from that uh, congratulatory message. Um, it'll give you information about different scholarships that could be attributed to, your, uh, to you, depending on your profile, as well as a deadline um, that we're going to ask that students register by um, for other programs that we have, don't hesitate to contact us at international at odensia.com. We'd be more than happy to speak about those. But for um, the master and management program in particular, that's the way that it happens on these is that once you get to the end of the process for each one of those sessions, you'll check your uh, joining school in France number on each one of this uh, program or the school's websites, and you'll be able to find out about your admissions results there. Okay, perfect. Um, we don't have any more questions. Um, Benjamin, I think you already talked a lot. Uh, I don't know if there's maybe one last thing you want to say or not, otherwise we can stop here. Or if you just want to ask one final question in the chat. We still have... Uh, just as we're waiting for that, I mean, um, if we don't have any other questions for today, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And please, you know, reach out to the different schools and, and engage in these types of conversations. I think what's really nice about the different programs that you have and these schools that are participating is the wide variety of different specializations and, and different schools who have different strengths. And what you really want to do with these programs is make sure that you join the program that fits the best with your career plans and with your interests. And so, you know, really having that conversation with um, the different uh, admissions departments at the schools, I think it's a real added benefit. And, you know, once again, getting that perspective from the student can also be really helpful. So even if you're not engaging with the admissions departments at each one of the schools, maybe another way to be able to get information is to uh, connect with current students at these institutions in order to be able to get information to see which one is really going to match best with you. So I think that those are uh, the one last question kind of popped up about uh, the contract details on the screen. Um, so if on a publication day you are admitted onto a program, you will be able to see the contract details and actually download it, sign it, and send it back to us. So yes, you'll be able to see all the different provisos, what we agree to do, what you agreed to do. Um, all of that is detailed in the enrollment contract that you can download. This is at least from the perspective of Odensia, but I do believe that the other schools that are participating ha have a similar sort of process that they, they have as well. So thanks a lot for your questions. So I'm not going to stop right now because I can see that someone is typing in the chat. So, OK, thanks a lot. Well, you're more than welcome. OK, um, well, I think we'll stop here. Uh, anyway, you have our contact details for Densia at Jonas Coin in France. Um, this webinar is anyway being recorded, so we'll send you in the following days uh, the replay. So thank you so much, Benjamin, for your time. It was really insightful. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye-bye.